And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, one of the games that I really enjoyed over the years is Pixel Tactics, which came in a very small box. Uh, which was part of a bigger collection of games. Pixel Tactics became the most well-known part of that game from Level 99 and has become its own franchise. We know this because we have Pixel Tactics Deluxe, which has come out after Pixel, Pixel Tactics 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, plus a bunch of little special packets for Pixel Tactics. What is inside this? Let's take a look. Now, just so you know, if you've never played Pixel Tactics before, go watch that review of it because I'm not going to be telling you how to play the game. I'm just showing you kind of what's in this box and how it relates to playing Pixel Tactics. Okay, we're not going to take a look at everything in the game, but these are the components that comes with the game. So let's take a look at some of the stuff that's, that's with the game. First of all, you get a pile of these leader cards. Now what these leader cards are, is they are bigger versions of leaders who are already in the game. For example, this is the one of the cards, this is from Pixel Tactics 3, I believe, and this is the leader, Udstad. Well, that's this looks much better. So these are just cool to have. I'm always glad to have leaders that take the place of these. And there is all sorts of really cool leaders, a lot of the different characters that you know. These are really big. You remember who the leader is. Your opponent can see what their life is. It's easy for you to see their special power. So this is just something cool that kind of supplements stuff that you already have in the game. Now, there's other things that come with this game. There are what we call common cards. Now, common cards are cards that can be used uh, the rule book has all sorts of things. There's a draft, you can make a cube of cards just like you can for magic. You can uh, play in a tournament style. And these are common cards, essentially these don't have leaders. So you can see this card here is a, a brick wall. <laughs> and then we got a treasure hunter. And so there's all kinds of cool uh, things. I actually like some of these characters. Um, I just like the fact that some of them are, are, are buildings, but here you have the tourist and the star knight. And just kind of running through these, they even have the Dark Knight who can intercept. These are not fantastically special cards. They're more base cards than anything else. And sometimes you just need to put these in your deck. If, if you're going to play with a certain kind of, you know, if you're playing in tournaments, which I'm not a big tournament player, but if you're playing in tournaments, you're going to want certain characteristics in your deck. Even here we have the Adventure Ranger Black, Yellow, Pink, and Green. And these guys all work together. Um, if the other ones are in play. Then you have the Earth Elemental, Lightning, Dark Elemental, Air Elemental, Water Elemental, and Fire Elemental. Again, you'll notice that they're all very basic. That's why they're common, and you can use these in different decks. Also for use in tournament play, you have locations. And there's actually different color locations in case you, you're playing with different people. You can remember which location. Now you have these locations. You pick one, and it's in play at the beginning of the game. And it gives you this action that you can take. So for example here you can discard a card from the top of your deck to remove three damage from a hero. Here the first time you play an order, begin an operation or set a trap each turn, you draw a card. So you have these actions you can take. You also notice at the bottom is a snap action. It's a free or a long snap action which means it takes two. Begin a ceasefire. This may only be used as the first action of your turn. That's pretty powerful. But when you do that you then have to turn it upside down and you can no longer use your location for the rest of the game. Discard all of your living heroes and restore three corpses in your unit to life. Again, super powerful but when you're done you turn it over. This number on them is a point thing that's used for tournament settings. And these uh, come in different colors, again, so that if you're playing against someone else, you can have a different color than they have. The game also comes with the Freelancer Mini Pack. They've made many mini packs uh, for Pixel Tactics, and you can include these in the game. And so this has a few leaders and characters for each of the people. It actually comes with you know, the, the big leaders for them. And so there's just extra stuff in the game. But the game also comes with basic cards that you can play. So let's take a look first of all at some of the characters that come with this. You can play Pixel Tactics. This is the deluxe set. And they did a good job at not making these weird or unusual. It's just some basic stuff here. Uh, just like um, some of the newer Pixel Tactics sets, these have traps in. Traps are cards that you can set behind your last three cards in Pixel Tactics. Uh, you set them down like this, and when you're supposed to, you reveal it and something happens. Like this one here, apply one damage to every rival hero and draw a card. Here, when a hero's attack would damage your leader, before damaging 
before damage return that to its owner hand. So if someone's about to hit your leader, you're like, boom, no, they're not. They're back in your hand. Or here, uh, when a rival draws a card, you must discard that card and another card at random. Boom! So you flip these and discard them and do the trap. Uh, but there are some cool characters. Here's a Titan, which intercepts and does one damage to this. This here, he takes a damage every turn. But he has intercept and he's powerful. He's a 3 9. The DJ, I like the DJ, is a spell where his spell can give each of your other vanguards plus one attack. That's these little tokens, which is a pretty cool idea. The silencer can shut down spells, um, essentially, or he has a spell where he can give a hero a no special abilities token. Love that. Very cool card. Uh, the hunter here, the rivals can't activate traps or they can't do here. You basically can stop something your opponent's doing. This guy has spell and order immunity, which is cool. Or you can copy and cast a spell of a rival hero, which is something that I like. The brewmaster, because of course you would bring something like this in the battle. He can put plus one or minus one attacks on people or remove three damage from a hero. The Undertaker, I like him because you can put a card from the top of a player's deck into an empty slot in their unit as a corpse when he's at the back. That's cool. There's also some very basic guys. I like the Warrior here. He's just attack strength. He's plus four in the rear, and in front he's plus two, and he can intercept. Uh, the Machinist here, when he comes into play at the beginning in the front row, he can essentially attack right away. This one I like because of his Vanguard action. Your leader takes two less damage from attacks to a minimum of one. Nice. Good. He's a defender. There's also leaders too. We'll take a look here at my top 10 leaders in this game. First of all, Rufus Zane here. He gets to do a free spell every turn. You build a deck around that guy. Here, whenever you defeat a hero, you apply two damage to a hero leader of your choice in the way behind the defeated hero. So you kill that guy in the front and you overlap damage, spilling on the person behind. Um, here, this leader, every time he gets hit, they, he, the person who hits him dies. Which is intriguing. You might let someone through just to have that person get killed. Here, whenever one of your heroes or leaders uh, takes damage for the first time, it's, only, it's, it's reduced to one. Which is really a neat thing. This is, I really enjoy this person. Here, you can give other people in your unit a ranged attack. That's really powerful. Um, Okay, buddy, you have a ranged attack now. Oh, what a great a power. Here, a limited action, remove one damage from all heroes in your unit. Cool healing ability. Here, this person's plus one attack for every hero in your unit. And as an action, you can give them plus attack. This is a tack, 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 tackity guy. Here, this one's random. I love Aberine here. You can reveal the top card of your deck and recruit it to the current wave. It's random. You're really not sure how it's gonna you know, work, but I like randomness. Here you can get rid of, you can basically give someone no special abilities. That's really powerful. Um, you cannot target heroes with intercepts. You, that, so there's some di difficulties there, but for the most part, your opponent puts out a hero that's a pain in your neck, this guy will shut him down. And my favorite leader here is Runica Zinanen, or however you say, they have no maximum hand size. You draw six extra cards at the beginning. Uh, you're, you're, Attack is equal to your hand size, a maximum of nine, but still, big giant hand of cards. That's your attack. Uh, even if you don't even use the special ability, just having that giant hand of cards at the very beginning gives you a huge advantage over your opponent. So these are my 10 favorite leaders. Inside the box, you can put everything. It has different spots. You can see here, I have these divider cards, which are made of plastic. They're the same as you've seen in Smash Up. And we have Pixel Tactics 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and the Deluxe Edition. Over here, your leaders, commons, bases. You also have a lot of dividers for the small packs. I don't have all of them. I put my tokens in the middle. You can, uh, here's the rule book that explains everything. There's, in the rule book, it talks about different ways to play, where you can play multiple players or have a draft. You know, you have your classic pixel tactics, and then it actually gives you ways to build decks, and then the actual rules of the game. And so all that fits inside the box, and pixel tactics certainly has grown over the years, that's for sure. Now, Pixel Tactics is a fun game. Does it need to be in this super big deluxe box? 
I'm not sure, but that seems to be level 99's MO, is to take a simple game and then blow it beyond proportion. Like, there's more pixel tactics here than I'm ever going to play. I'm definitely not going to be playing all these tournaments and draft and running it over and over and over again. But I guess some people will. For me, it's, I'm thinking, ooh, I want to play pixel tactics. There's so much variety in this box. It will never be the same game twice. That's what I'm happy about. You know what I like in here the best? Probably the leaders. Just it's a nice thing to have a leader who's big and cool and stands in the middle of your area. Um, I like th that there's more cards. I like the dividers. I like it a good way. I've been sitting around trying to figure out how to sort out Pixel Tactics 1 through 5. This has solved that di dilemma. Um, the bases and the commons and all that stuff is neat too. And the rules are good. Although the, the box does come with a rata because there's several things that it lists incorrectly in the rules. And the rules, I would have laid them out much differently. I would have said, hey, this is what you get in this set. Because there were some cards I'm like, what are these? And I had to like search through the rules. Oh, they're listed over here. That's what these cards are used for. Um, I would have done the rule book differently, I think. But overall, this is the crowning thing of Pixel Tactics. Do you want Super Pixel Tactics? Well, here it is. I I'm probably going to put it on my shelf because I really do like the game that much. And this should hold everything that they print for the next five years, I would assume. I mean, you can only have so much Pixel Tactics, right? Uh, right? Dice Tower Judgment, excellent! Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top rated audio podcast at dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at coolstuffinc.com. Shut the door. Yeah. Yeah.